A very warm welcome to everyone. Welcome to the course of remote sensing and GIS. So trying to understand what are the different kinds of uh, wavelengths are there in that. Okay. And uh, we started with first coming if you start with the highest wavelength coming into picture it starts with radio waves right next we understood that the microwaves will be coming into picture next coming your infrared next your uh, what do you say that uh, ultraviolet next your visible will come into picture next your gamma x-rays and then your gamma rays so one by one we were trying to just have an overview about what is electromagnetic spectrum so let's go deep inside this electromagnetic spectrum and understand what are their individual wavelengths their frequency because that's a very important characteristic property to be known by us because we as the user end user who is exactly utilizing that satellite uh, images doing some analysis we should know the backdrop also which satellite is designed for which wavelength and in which wavelength categories it is capturing the energy because without having that minimum understanding we cannot utilize some data for our analysis if you know the entire information of that data then only we can make use of that data so that's the reason from the scratch we need to understand where exactly the satellite is capturing which kind of wavelength it is capturing and which body which is sitting on the earth surface is responding to which uh, part of the wavelength is also important to us so that's the reason one by one we will be seeing each wavelength what is that uh, range in that okay and uh, which body is responding to which kind of wavelength that also we will try to understand today okay so let's go let me share the screen to you so now if you remember we started with uh, electromagnetic radiation we were understanding so i am not talking more about this wavelength and frequency you know they are inversely proportional to each other if you have if you are what do you say the wave which is getting propagated is having highest frequency it has lower wavelength and if it is having a lower a higher wavelength it has the lower frequency that is exactly known to you which is a very basic thing i am not concentrating on that immediate i am jumping inside okay so that i i assume assume that you know okay next coming we were seeing the categories as i have just said right now radio waves are there next microwaves have come into picture infrared visible region ultraviolet your x rays your gamma rays right so now let's move on and this was the last slide we were seeing in the uh, yesterday's class okay so you can see a kind of uh, two pictures here which are shown the left hand side is showing you the wavelength and the right hand side is showing you the frequency okay so now we will concentrate because in the uh, satellites when you see the description okay any description of a satellite if you see the wavelengths will be mentioned in that okay how many uh, bands uh, you will not know what is a band right now okay when we move on uh, you will understand you know it's the lower frequency that information is enough to us okay no need of concentrating on what is the frequency of radio wave you just remember what is the frequency what is the range of wavelength for a radio wave for a microwave for a visible region what is the range what is the range of the infrared ultraviolet like that we need to remember or memorize our wavelengths okay so on the left hand side you can just have a look here first coming we are talking from higher wavelength okay radio wave if you can see it's approximately coming from 10 power 4 till 1 meter you can see the ranges right next coming from 1 meter to 10 power minus 3 approximately you have the microwave i'm talking in meters okay and next it is uh, 10 power minus 3 meters till i think 10 power minus 6 me uh, meters you have uh, the infrared coming into picture and a very small range which is in between okay the 10 power minus 6 itself you will have the visible region next to that from 10 power minus 7 to 10 power minus 9 approximately you have your ultraviolet coming into picture okay and next comes your extra x rays till 10 power minus 11 and after that uh you have the gamma ray so that you will uh, uh get a very good uh, understanding about the ranges okay so you can have a look here okay i think my screen is getting shared okay so you can see there's a table sitting here which exactly shows you what is the range of wavelengths and the typical uh, which means the average wavelengths okay you can see here first coming uh in the earlier picture or in the earlier uh, slide when i'm showing you we started with radio waves 
okay and you can see here the same uh, kind of thing i will follow radio waves you can see approximately 10 power minus 1 meter to 10 power 6 meters which has the highest wavelength okay microwave 10 power minus 3 to 10 power minus 1 okay next coming your infrared which is nothing but 700 nanometers to 10 power 3 meters okay so uh, the upper limit of that is 700 nanometers okay next you can see the visible light which is a very small range you can see 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers you can understand how small is that ratio next coming your ultraviolet which is nothing but it comes from 400 nanometers to 10 power minus 8 meters okay next your x rays comes into picture which is nothing but 10 power minus 8 to 10 power minus 13 comes under your x rays and again from 10 power minus 10 to 10 power minus 16 comes your gamma rays okay so this is the typical range of the wavelengths to just make you understand what are the range what is the cut off between your x ray and your gamma ray what is the cut off between your visible region infrared region or visible region ultraviolet region so that's that's the kind of break we want we wanted to know okay now let's go inside and understand each of them in detail so we are back here again so what we will do is as i said most of the uh, remote sensing technology actually depends or actually uses which part of the electromagnetic spectrum is infrared is most infrared and your uh, visible region uh, these two are more utilized by the remote sensing technology satellite remote sensing technology okay so that's the reason we will concentrate more on this region but just an overview ultraviolet obviously we know that uh, in the atmosphere above your earth surface uh, we have seen so many layers in that one ozone layer is present where exactly this ultraviolet region is actually uh, what do you say it is filtered right so that radiation will is not allowed to fall on to the earth surface so that's the reason you cannot have the uh, wave coming into picture some part will be coming okay i'll not say that that 100% will not come some part will be just coming into picture so just now we have seen the ultraviolet region you can see ultraviolet region here the very why the name of ultraviolet has come into picture is nothing but it's very nearer to the violet region which is uh, uh, coming into uh, it's just left of your violet the visible region you all uh, you all know the colors which are coming into picture by right? the pgr or whatever we see you know those are the colors which we see in the visible region just of the left of the uh, violet radiation when it is finishing the next starting is your ultraviolet region so that's the reason it got the name of ultraviolet okay so the radiation is just beyond the violet portion of the visible wavelength hence its name okay the ultraviolet or uv portion of the spectrum has the shortest wavelength okay and just now we have seen the ranges also some earth surface material primary rocks and minerals fluorescence or emit visible light when illuminated by uv radiation even if some radiation is allowed to fall also you can see some materials which are there on the surface are responding okay let's move on to the next part which is our visible region so we know that visible region is a region which our human eyes are very sensitive which can actually capture only that part of electromagnetic spectrum okay and we just now have seen what is the range of that visible spectrum also it is 0.4 nanometers or sorry micrometer uh, till 0.7 micrometers okay you can just see the ranges here also you just refer the figure here which i am showing okay the visible region starts from 0.4 into 10 power 6 which is nothing but your micrometer and you can see till what range is the red 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 ending is 0.7 into 10 power minus 6 meter which is nothing but your 0.7 micrometer okay if you just move on what is happening violet blue cyan color next coming green and green and next is your orange and then your red is coming into picture right so these are the different categories which are present inside the visible spectrum okay inside the visible spectrum generally these are the colors which are human eye can actually uh, visualize okay it is important to recognize how small the visible portion is relative to the rest of the spectrum obviously you can understand the spectrum has started somewhere from uh, 10 power 6 meters to 10 power minus 12 meter uh, what is it 10 power minus 12 meters in this entire very large spectrum our human eyes are only sensitive to a very small micrometer range 
okay so there's a lot of radiation around us which is invisible to our eyes but can be detected by the other remote sensing instruments and and used to our advantage so you, you can understand our eyes are not are not able to visualize some part right it's only visualizing a visible portion which is very very small but what is the technology doing the remote sensors which are present in the satellites are able to capture the rest of the part not the entire part but at least some part is being covered by the remote sensors okay the visible wavelength cover a range approximately from 0.4 to 0.7 micrometer the longest visible wavelength is your red and the shortest is violet so violet is having point you can see the small uh, ranges also given here violet is from 0.4 to 0.446 or you can say 0.45 and next blue starts from 0.45 to 0.5 next green starts from 0.5 to 0.58 Okay, and yellow starts from 0.58 to 0.59, and orange 0.59 to 0.62, and red is 0.62 to 0.7 micrometer. Everything is in micrometer. So that's about your visible region. What is our visible region doing? It is having approximately six colors in that. Okay, violet, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. Out of all these colors, I hope you know red, blue, green are called as the primary colors. Uh, and the rest of the colors whatever uh, we are seeing in the rest three colors are called as secondary colors why they are called as secondary color and why red blue green are called as primary colors is nothing but these are actually independent colors red blue green so these are and when you see the violet or when you see the orange or when you see the yellow these colors why they are called as secondary colors is if you mix any of the two primary colors you will get the other color and why you why red blue green are called as primary is if you mix any of let's say i mix violet and yellow you will not get red by mixing any two colors you will not get any primary color primary colors are the base colors which are actually they are inherent in the uh, what do you say universe okay when you mix any of the two primary colors you get the secondary color so that's the reason they are named so so the same thing is written here blue green and red are the primary colors or wavelengths of the visible spectrum they are defined as such because no single primary color can be created from the other two if you just mix violet and orange you will not get blue okay but if i mix red and blue i will get uh, what's the color red and blue is violet okay but all the color other colors can be formed by combining blue green and red okay so that's the uh, what do you say understanding of how mixing of colors happen okay that we will see in the later part uh, i said you remember a b c d e f g where f analysis interpretation processing when we talk no so there i will talk about this color mixing how to make a contrast how to make a brightness out of that all these things comes into picture okay so i have i and i hope that you had a better understanding of visible region visible region range 0.5 micrometer to 0.7 micrometer you have six colors in that the lowest one starts at 0.4 micrometer which is nothing but your violet and the last one is at red which is having 0.62 to 0.7 micrometer okay so that's the understanding let's move on to the next part which is your infrared which is very 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 important to the remote sensors because human eyes also can sense visible region but this infrared region whatever we will see right now is not sensed by human eyes it is only sensed by the optical sensors which are sitting in the uh, satellites okay so let's see what is that range okay so the next portion of the spectrum which of interest is infrared region infrared why it's called as infrared is it is just ending at your red and next it is starting so that's the reason it is called as infrared which covers a wavelength range approximately from 0.7 micrometer to 1000 micrometer okay so the range of your infrared uh, infrared is 0.7 2000 micrometer and again this 0.7 to 1000 is again divided into two categories we will see one by one okay so you should understand 0.7 to 1000 micrometer is nothing but more than 1000 times as wide as visible portion visible portion is very small if you see the infrared portion what happens if this portion is multiplied by 1000 times that much length you can imagine for your infrared region It's very big portion in the electromagnetic spectrum which is being captured by your satellite 
okay so the infrared region can be divided into two categories one is called as reflected infrared and the other one is called as thermal infrared okay so they did two portions which means that from 0.7 micrometer to 1000 micrometer they are actually divided into two categories one is called as reflected infrared and the other part is called as thermal infrared what is this reflected and what is this thermal infrared it's nothing but thermal infrared is basically a high radiation so if you see 0.7 and 1000 uh, meters both of them if you just uh, have a look what is happening is thousand is a very high radiation whatever the earth surface is radiating back into the atmosphere so that is actually captured in this region so that's the reason it is called as thermal infrared okay the radiation in the reflected infrared is used for remote sensing purposes in a way where similar to the radiation in the visible portion how we have seen the visible portion in the same way your reflected infrared is mostly used in your remote sensing okay so what is that reflected re infrared ranges it's nothing but 0.7 micrometer to 3 micrometer so 0.7 to 3 it's called as reflected infrared and from 3 till 100 it's called as middle infrared and after that from 100 to 1000 it is called as uh, what is a thermal infrared okay so that's it. the thermal region is quite different than visible and reflected portion as this energy is essentially radiation that is emitted from the earth surface in form of heat so we understood uh, in geoscience course also the earth surface actually radiates back all the heat into the atmosphere once it once uh, the everything got heated up during the sunset time what happens all the heat whatever it got absorbed it just re radiates uh, back into the atmosphere so when that is going out it comes into the portion of your thermal infrared because of the very high heat which is coming out from the atmosphere okay so the small portion which has been left no that's actually called as your uh, middle infrared okay you can see here so near infrared mid infrared and far infrared so this reflected portion is again divided whatever the 0.7 to uh, 3 meter 3 micrometers whatever i said it's divided into two categories near infrared and middle infrared and whatever is there in the thermal part it is called as far infrared okay so two categories i have talked here to uh, the infrared region is divided into two parts one is your reflected and the other one is your thermal under this reflected part it's again categorized into two parts one, one is near and the other other one is middle infrared okay and most of the uh, remote sensing sensors uh, so far whatever we will see in future coming satellites no we are morely concentrated in this near infrared okay and very few are concentrated in this middle infrared so reflected part only we are interested this thermal part still uh, what you say the research is going how to make utilized of that uh, range also okay so that's that's about your infrared region which is very very important to us so uh, the range up is 0.7 to 1000 micrometer out of which we are mostly interested in 0.7 micrometer to 3 micrometer okay so let's move on to the next one which is your microwave region i said the technology is still growing in that okay so microwave red region also you have so many kinds of categories in here okay you can just have a look on the left hand side uh, there is uh, so many kinds of uh, categorization here p band l band s band c band x band x u band k band ka band so this is based upon their categorization of the uh, wavelengths they have actually given some names to that okay so overall if you see what's the range for the microwave it's nothing but 1 mm to 1 meter okay so from 1 mm wherever we have left 1 mm is nothing but just now we have seen 1000 micrometer that's nothing but 1 mm from there to 1 meter it's called as microwave region okay this covers the longest wavelengths used for the remote sensing and i said you microwave is also bestly used and the research is still going on the publishing of the data is at a very very slow rate okay most of the satellites and the data whatever we see you know most of them covers the infrared and visible region only these are actually uh, highly sensitive and you cannot uh, download them freely okay so the shorter wavelengths have property similar to the thermal infrared while the longer wavelengths approach the wavelength used for radio bro broadcast so what happens is after thermal infrared is finished you have the start of microwave okay so the kind of behavior if you see 
the thermal infrared how it behaves the left hand portion of the or the starting wavelengths of the microwave also behave in the similar manner and when it is coming to the end which means your k band your k a band whatever we are trying to see here that behaves same like your radio waves okay so for the broadcasting your radios the waves which we are utilizing is your radio waves so that's what is said here okay so we will move on to the next one right so this part is the source of energy right so we are at a a is putting some radiation onto the earth surface which is nothing but the b remember the wave is traveling like this so solar energy electromagnetic spectrum which has radio waves microwaves right infrared and next to that you have the uv ray next is your visible ray and next coming your x rays your gamma rays all of them are falling like this onto the atmosphere uh, sorry onto the earth surface in between what is happening b what is b it is traveling from the sun towards the earth surface through the atmosphere so in between what can happen i said in the earlier classes also in between some scattering will takes place right so let's see what is that scattering okay so let's move on to the next part which is your interactions with the atmosphere okay what is this interaction with the atmosphere you can just concentrate on the picture here i will zoom for some part okay you can just observe this picture what is this picture saying as the emr source emr source is nothing but your electromagnetic radiation which just now we have visualized how many wavelengths are there if that is just falling on to the earth surface it is traveling through the atmosphere so in between what is happening you can see some part is just absorbed by the atmosphere some particles may be present it may absorb right some part will be getting transmitted and some part scatters so whenever the energy is falling on to the earth surface if some particles are present in the atmosphere some absorb it some transmit it some scatter it if it is falling on a cloud let's imagine what will happen a scattering phenomenon takes place right so when it is just falling before falling you have so many kinds of phenomena coming into picture so let's understand what is the scattering what is this uh, or how this is exactly uh, defined let's have a look okay and we understand understood in the picture also you can see here after it is striking on to the earth surface also a quick scattering happens there because it's a quick interaction when uh, just understand when a droplet is just falling on to the earth surface in, as a rainfall what will happen when the drop is just striking on to the earth surface a uh, small sprinkling also happens right so because it's dropped from some height so in the same way when the object is getting struck with the radiation first instantly you will see a quick scattering happening right some absorption takes place which is nothing but your uh, what do you say depending upon the type of the body sitting there absorption takes place and again the other one is nothing but your reflection whatever is getting reflected that's what is captured by the sensors which is sitting in the satellite okay so let's understand the traveling from the emr source when the wave is traveling let's see what is that scattering because absorption you understand absorption is nothing but if the particle is present and that radiation is there it absorbs it transmission is nothing but a quick window which is just going let's imagine there's a window present okay you are allowing your sunlight what will happen it will move through that window that is a quick transmission nothing is obstructing there okay so other part we understood is a scattering why scattering is happening okay so let's see the what the material is saying us okay so before the radiation used for remote sensing reaches the earth surface it has to travel through some distance to of the atmo earth atmosphere so before it is striking the earth surface it it should travel through the atmosphere particles and gases in the atmosphere can affect the incoming light and radiation so what is happening the particles or the gases we know that atmosphere is made up of gases some small molecules or particles also are present in the atmosphere so presence of them actually change the uh, what do you say the pattern of the incoming radiation okay so these effects are caused by the mechanism of scattering and absorption okay you can see the particles or the gases which are present may absorb them or may scatter them 
depends upon the particles which are present there actually okay so scattering occurs when the particles or large gas molecules present in the atmosphere interact with and cause the electromagnetic radiation to be redirected from its original path so what happens if this radiation is falling like this there is some kind of particles present what will happen if it is hitting here rather than going it in the linear direction what happens a scattering happens it actually disturbs the presence of the gases or the molecules actually disturbs the original path of the travel of your electromagnetic radiation okay so that's what is called as scattering how much scattering takes place depends upon several factors how who can say how much scattering can happen it depends upon which wavelength the molecule is getting in contact is also important right and uh, uh, what do you say how much amount of radiation is coming is also important if it is let's say in the mid sun uh, mid day if you see very high amount of radiation actually comes down right so how much actually scattering happening happens it depends upon the wavelength of the radiation abundance of particles or gases how much dense particles are present how thick is that uh, layer which is there in the atmosphere if it's a cloud if it's a cloudy day what will happen more obstruction no radiation will reach to the earth surface so obstruction or the scattering pattern is different depending upon the presence of wavelength which is getting interacted how much uh, or how much abundance or how much thick are the particles or gases in the atmosphere that also controls and the third part is the distance the radiation travels through the distance the radiation travels through is nothing but how much far is the radiation traveling okay so let's say very nearer to the earth surface if you have so much dense uh, kind of uh, uh, what do you say particles are present what will happen there only huge scattering is taking place it cannot travel very easily through that obstruction right so the radiation reaching the earth surface will be very 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 less let's say 100% is there 100% solar radiation is coming and quickly at that interface immediately below that you have a very thick uh, amount of gases being concentrated so what will happen then you cannot uh, allow that out of 100% maybe 20% may be reaching right everything got absorbed there or scattered there itself so that also is important okay so the distance at which this particles are present also is also very very important so let's understand there are so many kinds of uh, uh, scattering also okay let's visualize what are the categories in that okay so the categories whatever we are talking is we understood that the presence of scattering phenomena comes into picture by the presence of gases or by the presence of the air molecules some kinds of particles which are present in the atmosphere only disturbs the incoming radiation and allow them to scatter okay so now let's see that so the various types of scattering of visible light is type of particle you can see the kind of categorization which we have made here type of particle particle diameter type of scattering and the phenomena so what is that type of particle is nothing but the presence of air molecules aerosols and cloud droplets the three are the controlling factors which actually create the phenomena of scattering okay the air molecules the aerosols or your uh, cloud droplets these actually control and how do you categorize them you categorize them by the presence of the diameter of the particles if the particle is having a very very small diameter you categorize them as air molecules and if it is having in the range of 0.01 to 1 micrometer then you call them as aerosols and 10 to 100 uh, micrometers if you see it's called as cloud droplets okay so that's how we categorize the presence the diameter of the particles are categorized into three types air molecules aerosols and your cloud droplets if you have the air molecules which are of a very very small diameter the type of scattering you call it as relic scattering okay and aerosols you have the knee scattering these are the types of scattering in the next slide we will see what is really what is knee or what is geometric okay uniformly if it is scattering you say it as uh, relic scattering if it's just scattering unevenly you call it as knee we will see them okay cloud droplets which is of a higher diameter it's called as a geometric scattering okay so the phenomena example if you see the examples it's nothing but blue sky why our sky looks blue in color 
why our sunset is red in color if you have you ever observed how the sunset will sunset or sunrise will be it's something like a kind of orangish reddish shade and sometimes uh, uh, you can see uh, the white clouds why the clouds are white in color or why your uh, smog is brown in color or why your uh, sky is blue in color because of these phenomena only the kind of uh, what do you say these appear to be in a such condition okay uh, so this we will come back to this slide once we understand what are the types of scatterings okay so really scattering occurs when the particles are very small compared to the wavelength of the radiation so what is he saying whatever the wavelength is coming into picture okay the particles are having very small wavelength or very small size compared to the wavelength which is coming in contact with them that kind of scattering we call it as rayleigh okay very small particles actually show this kind of scattering these could be particles such as small specks of dust or nitrogen and oxygen molecules okay rayleigh scattering causes the shorter wavelengths of energy to be scattered much more than the longer wavelengths so we have seen the wavelength ranges your uh, radio wave microwave uh, next comes your uh, what do you say infrared next is your visible region next coming your ultraviolet next coming your x ray and gamma rays out of all these variations rayleigh scattering which is by the aerosols is disturbing your shorter wavelengths shorter wavelengths which are the shorter wavelengths out of all the electromagnetic spectrum you should understand which is shorter wavelengths your gamma rays x rays from there we shorter starts actually this really disturbs your shorter wavelengths rather than your longer wavelengths okay rayleigh scattering is the dominant scattering mechanism in the upper atmosphere remember the atmosphere cl classification when i was showing you in your geoscience course remember the upper atmosphere which is nothing but your uh, above your thermosphere whatever we have talked no that part is more dominant in your uh, where we see is the rayleigh scattering dominant is in your upper atmosphere okay now, now let's see the uh, so this is actually a kind of uh, flow chart we, we will discuss it little uh, later slide you can see this interaction with the atmosphere the fact that the sky appears blue during the day is because of the following phenomena what is happening here why the sky appears blue is as the sunlight passes through the atmosphere the shorter wavelength so remember the shorter wavelength here we are talking about the visible light so understand whatever uh, the scattering phenomena we are trying to talk here is in the kind of um, uh, whatever we are trying to see now here is talking about the visible light in visible light if you remember what are the shorter wavelengths here shorter wavelengths here is nothing but your violet your blue comes under your shorter wavelength what are the highest wavelengths which is nothing but your uh, red your orange that category is come under your higher wavelengths right so what happens is as sunlight passes through the atmosphere the shorter wavelength that is your blue of the visible spectrum are scattered more than the other so that's the reason your sky appears blue in color you understood why it is appearing blue why it's appearing blue is when solar radiation is falling like this from that visible part whatever we are talking in that first aerosols will disturb the shorter wavelengths okay very small particles disturb the shorter wavelengths you can see what is the shorter wavelengths here violet and blue okay and now what happens is these are getting scattered or disturbed which is called as a rayleigh scattering and whatever that reflection that scattering is nothing but again coming back like this fluttering like this what is coming out your blue and violet is getting disturbed so that's the reason it is again reflecting back into the atmosphere that's the reason that is only visualized by a human eyes so that's the reason it is coming blue in color okay at sun why again you can imagine what is happening uh, uh, just now i explained you why it is looking blue in color now can someone say why it's why the sunrise or sunset uh, appears red in color or orange in color because the next particles whatever we have seen if they disturb the longer wavelengths then you see the kind of uh, what do you say 
uh, red color or orange color coming into picture so as at sunrise and sunset the light has to be traveled farther through the atmosphere than at the midday and the scattering of the shorter wavelengths is more complete this leaves a greater portion of the longer wavelengths to penetrate through the atmosphere so what is happening already when it is traveling through the atmosphere all your shorter wavelengths have gone whatever is left back is your only your uh, what do you say your red and orange so that's the reason you see the kind of uh, what do you say uh, the kind of red color or uh, what do you say orange color is coming into picture okay so now i hope you have understood you can even see the kind of picture which is shown here okay was it is showing you so when the radiation is just falling onto the atmosphere why it is appearing blue in color is that wavelength is scattered initially so that's the reason it appears blue in color why sunrise and sun sunset are red and orange in color is the longest wavelengths are actually scattered there because the shorter wavelengths already have traveled through so much of distance right and they got scattered no kind of blue and violet is left the rest left is your red and orange yellow those are only left so that's the reason that scattering happens so that reflection is only seen in the atmosphere so that's what is your uh, red and orange color okay so you can see me scattering occurs when the particles are just about the same size as the wavelength of the radiation we understood earlier also really scattering is nothing but the particle size is very small when compared to your wavelength but me scattering more over the same range range you have in uh, both these scatterings okay dust pollen smoke and water vapor are the common causes of me uh, scattering which tends to affect longer wavelengths than those by really so really we have seen small uh, kind of uh, nitrogen particles or the dust you know those actually trigger your really scattering what is this me scattering is nothing but due to the presence of water vapor paper pollen or dust or smoke that actually reflects your uh, me scattering to come in picture you should understand one thing really disturbs shorter wavelengths and me disturbs your longer wavelengths okay me scattering occurs mostly in the lower portions of the atmosphere where larger particles are more abundant and dominates when clo uh, cloud conditions are overcast so we should understand this happens in the upper uh, what do you say lower atmosphere that happens in the upper atmosphere the final scattering mechanism of importance is non selective or geometric this occurs when the particles are much larger than the wavelength okay equal me scattering less than your relic scattering more than is your uh, what do you say geometric scattering water droplets and large dust particles can cause this type of scattering non selective uh, gets its name from the fact that all wavelengths are scattered about equally this type of scattering causes fog plus clouds to appear white uh, i forgot to say you red blue green when you just mix three of them in equal proportions you get a color which is called as white in color okay and when three uh, three of the wavelengths are scattered equally in all the directions what is happening what you what the color output we get is nothing but your white in color so that is nothing but this type of scattering causes fog and clouds to appear white blue green and red light is equal to white light to our eyes okay so what has happened some radiation is falling and a scattering is happening okay whatever the scattered light is there so now imagine a visible light don't take the entire electromagnetic spectrum let's concentrate because we are talking visually about our eyes our eyes can only see visible light right so let's imagine the electromagnetic spectrum which is falling now we are talking about human eyes so in this electromagnetic spectrum only visible light is coming visible light it starts from violet to red smaller to higher wavelengths right so when this is just falling onto the atmosphere what is happening a small quick scattering is happening when the wavelength which is coming and hitting the atmosphere if it is having a very small size particles compared to the wavelength the scattering type is really scattering okay if the wavelengths and the size of the particles both of them match together you call it as me scattering and if the wavelength uh, wavelength is smaller and the particle size is bigger you call it as geometric or a non selective scattering okay when the relic scattering is happening it is disturbing the shorter wavelengths okay and for example that's the reason why sky is appeared blue in color because all the six colors are falling like this this particle which is present like this only touches the blue 
or only disturbs the blue radiation. So what happens? The blue gets reflected like this. So that's the reason the sky appears blue. When it is coming to the me scattering, what is happening? Already to some distance upper atmosphere, this radiation disturbance has created. When the time where it reaches to the lower atmosphere, already blue has gone, violet has gone. The remaining three colors which are there in the longer wavelength have rest, uh, are, are being seen. So they reflect actually. Okay, that's the reason you can see the sun, the sun is uh, uh, red in color or orange in color. So that's called as your me scattering. What is the geometric scattering? Geometric scattering is nothing but the particle size is very, very large than your wavelength which is falling. Okay. And what happens is when the radiation is just falling, all the colors are reflected in the same, uh, what do you say, uh, pattern. Okay. So when three of them combine together, red is coming, blue is coming, green is coming equally. When uh, three colors are combined together, reflection, if you just visualize, it is nothing but a white color. So that's the reason clouds are, or fog is seen as white in color. Okay. So these are the phenomena which exactly are happening from your A to B before reaching C. Okay. Before reaching C itself, these many things are happening in between. Okay. Next thing which uh, interaction with the atmosphere is till now we were only talking about scattering. But in the first slide, what did I show you? I have shown you that sometimes scattering happens, sometimes absorption takes place and sometimes transmission. So in the next lecture, when I talk, I will talk about absorption. So scattering is nothing but when some particle is coming in contact with the solar radiation, it actually uh, splutters or scatter all the radiation like this. Okay, rather than absorbing it or allowing it to move in the downward direction, what is happening? It's just reflecting like this. Whatever the reflected radiation which is coming into the atmosphere, our human eyes can only visualize that reflected radiation. That's the reason blue color sky is seen, sunrise is orange in color. So that's the reason why they appear in such colors. Okay, so that's the uh, today's class. So we will stop our discussion here. We'll see you again in the next lecture. Thank you for your attention.